Good morning and welcome to Bedrock Tiles educational seminar about movement joints. My name's Pete Brown. I'm going to talk to you today about tiling in accordance with British Standards 5385. Now, what we're going to look at is two types of movement joints, silicon and preformed. We're going to look at four areas that are most commonly um, used and we're going to talk about the actual uh, frequency where you should use them. So, let's start. Where Four areas, uh, key areas where we, we consider movement joints on an almost daily basis here at Bedrock Tiles. Firstly, if you have a project which has any existing structural movement joints or pre-existing pre movement joints, then it is, um, it is good practice to follow these to prevent any failure in the future. We have a hard floor finish we have buildings that are subjected to movement therefore if we don't adhere to how their uh, how that movement is absorbed then the floor will fail simple as that so firstly we just mentioned structural joints secondly would be any um, relief to the floor such as steps down to the floor you would need a movement joint around the, uh, the base of that or even on uh, columns within the project you would need movement joints around the base of columns Thirdly, if um, the tiles are butt to any other material, such as a commercial office, tiles are butt to carpet quite often for acoustics, or in a residential property where a real wood floor uh, would abut to the tiles, say from a, a living area to uh, the dining or kitchen area. Thirdly, would be around the perimeter and across the threshold of any rooms and doors. Now, Looking at that in a bit more detail, we can use uh, and often use a silicon movement joint for that, which is exactly what it says. It's a tube of silicon, they gun it in. It's available in many colours, so you can get uh, the silicon to suit the colour of your floor. Now, this is a preformed movement joint. This is more common in high traffic areas such as commercial premises, or, I don't know, train stations, airports universities, swimming pools, and don't panic, that black will not stand out in your floor because there are different colours available to suit the design. So that's a preformed movement joint. The frequency that we should use movement joints would be if we talk about the wall first, the wall tile movement joints should be in base sizes of three and a half to four metres uh, maximum with obviously um, movement joints being adhered to in vertical corners. Secondly, would be to talk about the floor. Okay, so floor movement joints slightly different. You've got a lot more, um, a, a lot more distance between them this time. So two types of floor. Firstly, an underfloor heated um, installation or a building actually that has a high amount of glass curtain wall in which will obviously incur a lot of solar gain causing the floor to um, extract um, expand and retract with the heat sun coming up and down therefore in base sizes on a floor an underfloor heated or a solar gain affected floor we should consider going down to six to eight square meters now on a non underfloor on excuse me under heated floor a regular floor on a screed then we can consider movement joint bay sizes of 8 to 10 square meters okay so hopefully that helps you a little bit on understanding movement joints uh, if you need any more information please feel free to give us a ring here at bedrock tiles we'll be more than pleased to help you out or simply visit our website www.bedrock-tiles Dot com where you'll find our details. Thank you very much, Pete Brown on movement joints.